Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. The Delta State Government on Tuesday said it is set to commence work on the bad portions of the Wari Sapele Road and other federal roads within the state. This announcement came a week after the ruling People's Democratic Party, PDP in the state, and the opposition APC, all Congress, all Pro progressive Congress, expressed divergent views on the 28th anniversary of the state, created along with 11 other states on August 27, 1990. While the PDP, which has ruled the state since 1999, is of the view that the oil rich state has fared well, the APC vehemently disagreed, saying criminality and cultism are major problems confronting the state on a daily basis because of lack of proper synergy between the government, security agencies, and the citizens. Joining us now to speak on development, politics, and security in the oil rich state is Delta State Commissioner for Information. Charles Aniagu, welcome and good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning, viewer. So congratulations on the celebration of the creation of Delta State. I wanted to talk to you and I wanted you to touch on Thank you. some of the you're welcome. Some of the um, opposition um, allegations, which is really about the lack of development in Delta State the security issue, and also the issue of cultism, which continues to come up. How do you well, respond to you those allegations? Much, good morning, once again, Ruben. Well, for us in Delta, we are concerned about governance. We believe that uh, the election has been won and lost, and uh, this is the time to embrace governance, which means you have to progress to the level of providing and addressing the issues that uh, we canvassed in the course of the campaigns. And it is uh, not unexpected of the opposition parties to raise issues. That is their role, to keep us on our toes so we don't begrudge them. But what we have done since after winning the election, in line with what Senator Kowa also did in the last four years, is to, be, is to continue to deepen uh, those uh, progressive steps that he took in the last four years that made the people of Delta to re-elect him overwhelmingly. And what are these issues? We are focusing on increasing the number of uh, roads that we've constructed and that we are still constructing. We are deepening uh, the progress we made in the last four years in the area of uh, providing more infrastructure in the educational sector, as well as training and retraining of um, the personnel in that sector, i.e. the teaching staff and the non-teaching staff. We are also progressing to addressing the issues of the environment. Like I, I can tell you now, at the moment we are dealing with issues of um, flood so that at the end of the day we are not um, overwhelmed by uh, the flood as predicted by NIMET. And there are a lot of other issues that we are concerned about. For those who are looking at 2023, we are not disturbed about that because 2023 is too far, it's still far from now. Maybe around 2022, we may want to uh, join issues along that line. But right now we are concerned about development and uh, we're not going to be detracted. But you didn't address their claims about insecurity in Delta State. I mean, we're so thankful that reports mm -hmm. are that um, Senator Okowa's sister-in-law, Elizabeth, was released mm -hmm. by kidnappers. But the report that it happened at all is deeply disturbing, as is the report that a huge ransom was paid. What does this say about the state of security in Delta State at the moment? There is difference between rumor and reality. The issues of insecurity is today a national issue. And Delta is even one of the safest states. You, of course, you are in the media. You do know that Delta is very, very safe. For instance, we are talking about destruction of uh, properties here and there. Have you heard any of such in Delta? Our people in the last four years have learned how to embrace peace. Delta has become very, very peaceful. If, uh, very, very peaceful. If you go to the creeks today, oil uh, exploration and oil-related activity, uh, activities uh, in top gear because our people have been able to provide the enabling environment. That's why we continue to appreciate our traditional rulers, our youths, who have keyed into the, the uh, agenda of Governor Kowa to ensure that we live in a much more uh, peaceful and harmonious uh, uh, environment. And so when people talk about insecurity and they mention data, it's either they are playing politics or they are being smart by half. You talked about the issue of kidnapping. Kidnapping is also something that has happened across the length and breadth of uh, the, the country. We are not very happy about it because uh, across the length of, uh, and breadth of this country is uh, taking a, a huge toll on the resources of the people. But in the case of data, it is also not the way it is in other states. 
We have tried as much as possible, working very, very closely with the different security agencies to ensure that our people sleep and then have their two eyes closed. So when individuals talked about um, the spirit of insecurity and they mentioned data, either that they are not reading what's happening in other parts of the country, or they just want to play politics. And like I said earlier, we are not uh, into the issue of playing politics when it is time to govern. And so there is no cause for alarm with uh, respect to the issues of uh, insecurity. We're on top of it and we're very, very confident that working very, very closely with uh, the security agencies, we'll be able to get out of it. But what we have done beyond the issue of taking advantage of uh, the cooperation between the state government and security agencies is to ensure that we reach out to our people via development and being equitable in both appointment and uh, bringing people on board to govern and assist the government to provide the, the necessary infrastructure that our people uh, earnestly yearn for is to ensure that we are equitable. The government believes that every part of Delta State is, is uh, pardon me to use this word, develop, developable. That is, you can, develop, you can develop everywhere and every part of the state, whether it's in the creeks or whether it's in the upland. And if you come to Delta today, you will understand that that issue of saying this area is difficult terrain is, has been dealt with. We are taking development to the creeks because largely the economy of our state and indeed that of the country is uh, kept alive by the revenue and the dividends that uh, actually uh, accrue to this country from these same creeks. Because of that, we have been able to deal with the issue of restiveness in the creeks. Mm. If you also come to the upland, we also ensure that the people are not left out. So with development, we are dealing with the issues of uh, insecurity and we are cool, hoping that the entire country is able to, the, the federal government as it were, is able to address a number of other issues. So at the end of the day, the entire country is safe for everybody. Thank you. Um, you mentioned the issue of um, equitable, and um, during the last swearing in, the governor did apologize to women and said that the that the appointment were not the appointments to the commissioners were not favorable to women, and pledging that there will be better representation for women in subsequent appointments. I wanted to get an update on the subsequent appointments and how you how the governor plans to have better women representation in government. It's no longer a question of how he plans. He is, has already addressed it, and he's still addressing it. Of course, uh, talking about the issue of commissioners, you know the constitutional provisions and the, so many other things that played role in uh, appointing uh, commissioners. But I can assure you that appointment of boards, appointment of other individuals, like at the level of uh, DGs, the women are even, um, the men are the one crying at the moment. But we are very, But there's very still only one, and, uh, one very, woman very commissioner. Um, can you address that, please? No, that is at the level. He is, are, no, no, there are two. That was at the level of constituting the state executive council. That was when he tendered that apology. That look, because of the political equations at the different local governments, where the leaders are consulted, and in a number of these areas, they were able to push forward uh, men rather than uh, having a, a good number of women. And the governor apologized that the number of other appointments, the DGs, members of other boards, and a good number of SEs and uh, uh, special advisors are almost uh, largely within his uh, control. And that he also dealt with very, very well. As I speak to you today, we have two development agencies, one to take care of Asaba, and then that is the capital territory, and another one to take care of Wari, Uwe, and Everance. The one in Asaba, which is the state capital, is being headed by a woman. There are still a number of uh, appointees that we now have today, that each time they roll out appointments in strategic areas, women are now holding very, very strategic positions. Even the appointment given to a woman, the governor has said, in the case of the State Executive Council, that he's going to pay very, very special attention to technical education. A woman is the one heading that ministry. And we believe that with our intention to establish at 19 additional technical schools, that she's also going to play a very, very critical role. So he's already keeping fit with that promise he made that he's going to ensure that a good number of women are brought on board in the governance of the state. And that is being uh, dealt with. Do you have any numbers for us so we can just get a sense of where he is on this journey of equity when it comes to women representation in Delta State? This, the, the, the issue is not just about numbers. You, you don't just begin to just deal with numbers. You look at, first of all, strategic places because the government is also being formed. It's not done with the uh, constitution of constitution of boards. So we don't have an update on we numbers yet. We are dealing yet. with these issues. 
no, in terms, in terms of numbers, you can't have an update with numbers because number one is a work in progress. So we can't give you a number today and then maybe by the next moment. Do you I came have into a goal? The capital Do you territory have a goal? Yesterday. I don't. Does the governor have a goal of how much? If we have a goal. Yes. Do you have a goal of, how, of women representation? And the reason why is because the governor made an issue of it and therefore it is now an issue that we have to talk about. We, ha we, we, have, we, have, a goal, we have a goal. We have a goal that will be in line with uh, the... Uh, the, what was conversed at the national level, they talked about 35%. We have a goal in that direction. But beyond having a goal in terms of numbers and meeting certain percentages, we are very much interested in getting women to play very, very critical roles in certain strategic ministries, agencies, and departments of government. And that's very, very critical. And I give you an instance. By the time you have a woman heading an agency as strong as the Capital Territory Development Authority, there are a number of other spillover, effect, that is spillover effects in terms of individuals to engage, in terms of contracts to be given out, in terms of many other engagements that will take place. So by the time you are looking at that person as one person, you may not be getting the real situation because there are a lot of spillover that will come on account of that particular appointment. Well, so if you begin to, to count if I can one come person, in here. We've come to the point in Nigeria, unfortunately, yeah, where we have to congratulate governors for even inaugurating a cabinet in the first case, because Governor Okowa is one of 10 that has actually managed to do that. Yeah. There are 19, 100 days later who have failed to do so. So can we just hear some of his development plans? You've just talked about this development agency in Asaba. It was the Asaba Airport the fruits of that agency? What about the restructuring of ministers, uh, ministries, um, departments, and agencies in Delta State? What about the plans for education? Let's, let's hear some of the plans going forward. OK, now starting from the, uh, the Asaba Airport, that is a, the, our international airport that you rightly mentioned, I am happy to report that um, just last week here, the Minister of Aviation, uh, Hadi Serika, was in Asaba. He inspected the facilities and he declared that the facilities in that airport is top notch and is of international standard. He is also very, very pleased with uh, the transparency that we brought to bear in the construction of that airport. And he even said that the federal government would like to also borrow a leaf on what we have done because it's not one very easy task. It took us about three years going through very, very rigorous processes to ensure that that airport is a concession. And at the end of the day, we are very, very optimistic that we'll get value for money and effort that were put into building that particular airport. That's as, the airport is, as far as the airport is concerned. Now, if you come to the area of education, just last two weeks here, we engaged no fewer than 1,000 teachers, very, very qualified science teachers, to also uh, go and beef up, uh, to come on board and beef up the number of teachers that we have in our school system, particularly the secondary school system. We also engaged 200 uh, non-teaching staff to aid uh, these teachers in the provision of um, uh, quality education to our pe pe uh, pe uh, people as, chid as children. But beyond that, I can tell you that we're also building new schools. Just in the course of this week, the school approved the, est uh, the establishment of uh, two new schools, one secondary school and uh, one primary school. That is in addition to another 36 that was done in the course of last four years. Why are we doing so? We are hoping to expand the reach so that our children will have more access and we won't tend to continue along that trajectory. But beyond also doing that, we'll have a teacher development uh, a center where we now have our teachers go back for the purpose of training and retraining. So that if a teacher is uh, before now an analog one that cannot uh, uh, possibly log into the computer and then Google what is happening outside the shores of this country, now we are bringing them to speed with the modern day realities. That we are doing. So we are not only focusing on infrastructure, we are also dealing with issues of human capital. But even as we are doing that, we are very, very, very mindful of the quality of the environment that the students and indeed the teachers will need to operate for them to have a much more effective learning. That is not to say that we have gotten to where we want to be. That is not also to say that we have addressed all the challenges we have in our school system. Mr. It's Niago, I'm sorry I have to interrupt at this point. Can you please hold your thoughts? We have to take a short commercial break and we'll be back to talk more about the development of Delta State. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Morning Show here on Arise News. We're still with Delta State Commissioner for Information, Charles Aniago. Mr. Aniago, just before we went on the break, you were talking about the developments in Delta State. Please continue. Yes, thank you very much. You recall that in the course of your introduction, you mentioned uh, what we said in the course of the week with respect to our intervention in bringing um, 
some of the federal roads to a state where they become much more um, motorable. We are having a lot of challenge in that direction. There are a number of federal roads. Um, I want to believe it's not only in data, but at least the ones who have in data, because data plays two very, very critical roles. It's a destination as well as a transit state. You transverse data to assess states in the southeast and a good number of the states in the uh, south-south. And of course, coming from the southeast and the south-south, you also have to pass through data to assess the southwestern part of the country and indeed the north central states. Now, the state of those roads is such that uh, they are quite deplorable, those federal roads. We have, over the years, intervened. We ensure that they, at the time that the worry as uh, Benin Road is motorable. We brought it back to a state where vehicles can easily pass through. But this time around, it's in a very bad shape. Just yesterday, the governor directed that um, one of the very, very strong construction companies operating in the state uh, deployed to the state because to a state, a part of the the road coming from uh, Benin to Wari. We are intervening in the Abo Eku road. This is also a federal road. We have before now intervened on the um, Benin on the Char route. And we just do hope that the federal government is able to deal with this road. Yes, they did mention that uh, these roads are already uh, given out to contractors, but we plead with the federal government to mobilize these contractors so that they're able to put these roads to you to for in a state where people can use them. Because why are we disturbed? Yes, it's federal rules, but our people are also people using it. So they don't, we don't want to care whether it's federal rules because our people need to have good roads. And But the issue is that it's digging too deep into our finances. The finances that we would have been able to deploy into other issues that are on the residual and on the concurrent list are not being used to tackle issues that are already on the exclusive list. So we just do hope that federal government come to our aid in that regard. But beyond our intervention in the federal routes, We've been able to also link up our communities, our local governments, to the extent that no fewer than 1,270 kilometers of roads has been, it was uh, backed upon in the course of the uh, last four years and up to now, and out of which is, we'll be able to conclude uh, more than half of that in terms of being completed and commissioned. And in addition to that, we also ensure that we have line drains, almost close to 600 kilometers of line drains. And if you come into a data state, you will see that the number of our roads are built with a paved drain such that it is able to last longer than uh, anybody could, could imagine. But uh, beyond that, you see also what we are doing with uh, storm drainage to enable us manage flood. We are mm -hmm. doing that in a number of urban areas, but when you come into Asaba or you go to Wari, you will see what the government is being in that regard. Several billions is being uh, deployed to achieve that. But beyond also what we are doing in the area of road, the issue, the same issue with respect to environment. We are beautifying our environment to make them much more livable, and at the same time, managing uh, the different streams and rivers in the state, such that when we deflood the city, the urban centers, we are able to have where to empty the flood into, so, and not just to get houses to be submerged on account of management in one spot, and possibly creating uh, other problems in another spot. I'm a member of the flood uh, committee that is dealing with uh, the challenges uh, predicted uh, by NIMET, and then, of course, working very, very closely with um, other agencies. The government is determined to ensure that our people relocate. And then we have uh, made arrangements to uh, put them in camps where we can also uh, provide for them and hope that uh, in the not too distant time we will out of this uh, challenge. Our determination in the long run, because we know that flood is going to become more of a perennial issue, is to begin to have permanent camps if it happens and also enjoy uh, enjoying our people to stress as much as possible to stay off these uh, coastal areas that are uh, predominantly uh, flooded whenever such a challenge comes up. That is our direction in the long run. Mm -hmm. We have also made a lot of impact in the health sector. Today, the central hospital in Asaba is not only up and running, but is also providing top-notch technical uh, medical services to our people. In that particular facility, you have also second of its kind in the country, a referral center for sickle cell uh, sufferers. We call them warriors in Delta State because we believe that they are survivors. So when you come there, apart from the one in Unilag, you see a center that takes care of people that are living with the, the sickle cell uh, disease. And so a number of other areas where the uh, government of Senator, if you realize, I don't want to go into the politics of uh, what the opposition uh, did say as to what we have to celebrate in uh, 28 years. In 28 years, we have not gotten to where we want to be. 
But don't forget, PDP was not in power for that 28 years. But we are not interested in whether it was a military rule or whether PDP has been in power for 20 years. What is important Ms. is that Ms. we are making um, a lot of Mr. progress Ami as a Amiango, state. I'm gonna, I just want to jump in here since you did mention mm. the progress you're doing in health. Can you give us an update on the universal health scheme in Delta State? I know that um, the, one of the last times we spoke th th to... Thank you very much. Okay, please. Mm. Thank you. You know, the, the advantage we are enjoying in that regard is that even the, the, the national uh, health insurance was made possible by the very, very strong works of my governor when he was a senator and the support of his colleagues in the Senate, as in the last Senate, in the last two Senates, the seventh Senate. They did a lot to ensure that that particular law is passed. But even when it's passed, the federal government has not even made as much progress as we are making in Delta State with respect to uh, contributory health insurance. As I speak to you, we have over 600,000 Deltans enrolled in that scheme. And our scheme is not just taking care of only those who are in the former sector, who are just working for government. We're also taking care of people who are even in the villages. We've been able to devise a means where with just 7,000 Naira, you can enroll a person for a year, particularly for those persons who are not in the former sector. And that is why we have been able to record this uh, huge number in terms of the enrollment uh, process. Every day at events, the, the Health Insurance Commission is trying as much as possible to sensitize the people, to let them understand that out-of-pocket expenses when you have medical challenge is not always the best. And so our people have been able to key in and they are embracing it and it has, not, it has no color of party. Once you are a debtor, you, are, you live in Delta, you can just enroll and you are home and dry. The progress we are making in that direction is mind-boggling, and we are very, very optimistic that as we progress along that line, we'll be able to get a good number of our people to continue to identify with that particular uh, program. It is the best thing to do, because the number of times persons fall sick, because sickness does not always announce that it's coming. Mm. But sometimes when it comes, it may come at a time even when you are a rich man or a big man, you may not have the funds. But with contributory health uh, insurance, you are able to approach the medical, uh, whoever is providing them, um, such medical services and the health sector provider in that regard is able to attend to you without you having to go, uh, put deep your hand in your pocket. But what that does is that at the end of the day, you are covered. Imagine paying 7,000 naira a whole year for an individual. How much drug would that provide? But the government is able to do that, provide a pool, and then make our people to live in a much more uh, healthy state. Because if you begin to wait for individuals to go, even just treating malaria alone, in one month, can just take away the 7,000 Naira. And here you are, you are paying 7,000 Naira for a whole year, and you are protected in terms of a, a necessary head cover for the whole year. And we just do hope that other states will copy it, because we have not been able to understand that even our neighboring states, people are now coming in to claim that they are from Delta, just the same way they are also coming to Delta to school, because we provide a free and compulsory education up to the secondary school level. So we now have our people coming from neighboring states to come to Delta to take advantage of that. So we just do hope that every other state, beyond even those who are our neighbors, are able to also embrace this so that it becomes easier for everybody and it becomes easier for every Nigerian to have access to some of these good things that by today, by the grace of God, we are enjoying in Delta and we hope to improve on it. Great. Speaking of a template for other states to copy, I mean, Delta State was unequivocal in condemning the xenophobic attacks in South Africa, but at the same time took proactive steps to ensure that attempts to loot and damage South African businesses in Delta State were stopped in their tracks. Can you describe how you accomplished that and what other states could consider in the future? Because, you, of course, you must have heard that other states were not so effective in stopping these reprisal attacks. Well, that gives you an insight into what the new data looks like. First, we must appreciate God for making it possible for our people to understand that the investment that individuals are destroying on account of the xenophobic and barbaric attack in South Africa and then visiting such on our people in Nigeria is double jeopardy. Nigerians who are in South Africa have lost what belongs to them. Mm -hmm. And when you come back here just because Nigerians may have taken advantage of the franchise and just take a South African name and invest in that business for the purpose of uh, making money and you now go ahead to destroy the business. The name remains, but the business dies. Now, when that business dies, whose business is dead? is the Nigerian businessman's uh, income and uh, revenue that you have killed. The businesses who have in ShopRite, in MTN, 
I have been able to engage deltans. And we are happy that our people realize that much. But we must also appreciate our security agencies because, of course, you know there are those who will not be happy that we are peaceful, who may want to, on their own, want to bring in um, certain things so that they can claim that data is equally uh, a disturbing center. So for the purpose of such persons, we ask the security agencies to assist us in providing cover in certain strategic uh, locations with a view to forestalling possible uh, outbreak of um, uh, such an um, act. But what is most important is that our people did not even make any attempt to want to destroy anything because they understand that these things have a way of growing our economy. We want to, our government, we take necessary action with respect to addressing the very barbaric act of uh, some of these hooligans in South Africa who think that uh, taking vengeance on other nationals is what is going to make them live a healthy life. There is no way they are going to live a healthy life on account of what they are doing. It All is right. bad for Mr. their economy, Mr. and Aniago, it is condemnable Aniago, at all fronts. Before you go, just because you mm. did touch on yeah. it, um, about the, the recognition of your people around um, the jobs that these businesses provide, um, in one sentence, can you just give us a quick update on the Office of Job Creation in Delta State and how much progress you're making? We are, we are going to be leaving soon. We have to cut off soon, but I just want to give you that opportunity to talk about that. Well, well, uh, well I'm, I'm happy you are quite knowledgeable about a good number of the things we are doing in Delta. In 2015, when Governor Kowa came on board as the governor of the state, he did promise that they need to address the unemployment challenge in the state, uh, due to how it is in other parts of the country. And then what he did is to set up a job creation office headed by a non-politician, a professor. And today, I can report to you that directly, that's directly from that office alone, over 4,800 uh, Deltans have been engaged in terms of having a skills and entrepreneurs. But there are a good number of others who have, also, who have also been able to engage through other means. But that office alone have been able to train directly. And the indirect cons the consequence of that is that more than 17,000 other, 17, other deltans have also been engaged. Well, thank and so, you so we are much. making progress with that. What we have just done is to re in that well, direction. Well, congratulations, and thank you for coming on the show. I do hope you continue to work on your equity when it comes to women, but congratulations on the work you're doing.